go ahead okay so um i am planning to start velocity bank- banking on in J- july once my hillock is in the bank i closed it on the third first and but i have two debts to deal with but i'm not sure which one to start with i did um I did the video I think the video that you showed how to calculate your cash flow but then I realized in my bank there is no cash flow because I've been putting it in the savings so my question is should I just wait until I got something in the cash flow or go ahead and start it in July So go ahead and uh share with me your four major numbers what are you bringing in per month what are you spending and then you said that cash flow is zero because you're saving money. Yes, yeah. And how much are we saving per month? So <clears throat> after I remove all the expenses, I <clears throat> sorry, probably like 200 to 500 whatever is um left uh, after all the bills and expenses. Yeah. And then income, so how much yeah, go income ahead. is 5767 expenses 2657 roughly okay where's all the other money going uh, <laughs> so we I, i'm from kenya and sometimes we like send some to help family back there so it's more what i looked at the expenses that that, that video that you showed us i saw all my money is like most like going to like sending it to to kenya Okay so, so, working so on, like you, stopping that. So you personally this is you what you spend right? Yes. On top of that you send money to Kenya and yes. uh let's do you're sending about that much is that correct a month? Yes. Okay. And, and in the, yeah yeah that's that's what it goes out um that one minus 500 or 200 here. Right. So Right yeah. so I I did so my so 610 yes okay so that number can be higher and then obviously that leaves you with less um savings per month so then you're at a net zero cash flow technically because this money is being saved now how much money have you saved up so far uh 28k okay and now you said you had two debts right that's it yes Just, okay good uh what are those two debts mortgage and the mortgage is divided into three the way we got it like uh, one of them is like 4.625% uh that's 22 right now it's 22 and 57 cents and that one is 4.625% um oh so the hold on so the total amount is 222 843 57 That's the first one. Yeah. It's divided into three, so I'm going to give you the bit now. Okay, keep going. So that one is like 4.4.625% uh interest rate and I pay that monthly 1620 and that's like every month uh first of every month. Um the second one is 41322 and 92 cents. And 92 cents. Okay. And, and it's it- 5% interest rate paying 241 and 57 cents. every month. Okay. Uh the that one is 14,999 and 10 cents and 6 6.625% interest rate and 102.4 102 and 45 cents uh every month. Say that one more time. One uh 102 dollars and 45 cents. So it's and Okay. So the one it's and one two house. yes It's, it's the same mortgage yeah it was divided like that when we got it do you know what that is called <laughs> i'd love for you to send me the documents on that i've never i've never seen this before so i'm wondering if this is the primary mortgage right here 222 and then this is like either a home equity loan or two loans like a second lien loan and a third lien loan so when i got the whole house is like it was 305 okay but then um i i walk as a nurse and the hospital I used to work gave us a little bit of loan and they broke it down into this too. So you got the mortgage through your job. Yes. Very interesting. I'd love to yeah. see documents on that if you could send it my way. Okay. So the thing is this I I I went to the bank and I borrowed a Helloc which thank God I closed it on the third first. So the Helloc is 90k uh 
for the first three months is 3.594 percent for six months and so i was the way i borrowed it they are going to consolidate the two like the the second and the third uh with the rate with with this rate which is six months mm, beautiful and then and then five five point five nine six percent uh after that okay is the the rate and, for the hillock and you got approved already i got approved yes what was what was the credit limit again 90k this is the second position HELOC second position revolving simple beautiful interest cool 90k at what was the rate again starting intro rate it's 3.594 percent yep and then you said it jumps to five five point five nine six percent okay so we can so they uh they paid this off and this off yes and then i will yeah so now you owe this on this i owe yes i owe this on this and i will be paying 263 i think some right sense. right so what's the what's the balance on it now these are the balances as we talk it just happened yes okay cool so you owe like 56 seven cents. okay 57. So around there roughly yep okay so we got 20k saved in a bank money is going here i yeah. have a debt tool i now should move this and this all to here yes to the heloc so that's one move that we should be uh implementing now that we have the debt tool your heloc is going to replace your savings account your emergency fund right so it, it becomes where i had where I, where I have a question is one debt uh credit card um that's like 17k so I was wondering which one should I hit first? Is it like this mortgage or the seven? Oh yeah, yeah. So so yeah. we have to do the we're doing velocity banking on the debt tool first because the bank just started velocity banking for you, right? Okay. So so a chunk has already been committed. Mm -hmm. We now need to pay down that chunk, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we you know we owe fifty seven is what's owed. So we should be focusing on velocity banking on that. So 90K okay. is the credit limit times 66%. So 59,400 is our highest uh, chunk amount, right? Yep. And we don't even have cash flow, but I'm just going to go off this number, 500 cash flow times 12, technically our chunk range anywhere from as low as six to 59.4. Now the bank already put things in motion for us. So we mm -hmm. need to, we need to take advantage of this rate for as long as possible, because what we're doing or what they've done for us is they just consolidated these two high rates into, yes. into this. And now your 102 and your 241 is now coming into the line of credit, which instantly becomes cash flow, cash flow. which is nice, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. now we go from, we go from, so 102, 45 plus 241, 57 plus, I'll use the, I'll use an in-between number, say 350, okay? So now technically income goes in each and every month, 5,767, expenses come out and your net cash flow that stays in the HELOC is going to be the 694.02 for right now. And we should probably do this for the six months that it's on that uh, uh, introductory rate. I want to okay. maximize that environment for right now. Okay. Uh, and this also gives you the opportunity to practice velocity banking and kind of feel it and witness it and kind of see the numbers money going up money going down you know balance going up balance going down now tell us about the credit cards that you mentioned because that was just the one debt you said there's a second debt right so which one it's is the that? credit card right it's, it's the, the credit card so what do we got on that 17k Seventeen thousand is what's owed yes at what interest rate uh 19.24 and what's the payment uh right now is like 440 it just came out the the due date is 23 and the, the closing is like 26 so it just came out and it's 440 a month gotcha so that's a new debt okay yes do you have any other credit card debt nope okay that's it do you have any other credit cards available i have one for sam's club but it's zero for uh, sam's club you said mm -hmm. so back to it 17,000 
19.24, that's 440 a month. Now, technically speaking, we could absolutely move this into the HELOC. There is space to do so. And then you would have the 440 with the 69402 working on 3.5% for the time being. We could we could absolutely do that if if you feel comfortable with that. Or we could wait, right? Where we could say, all right, um, let me just get a let me get a read on this. Let me get comfortable. So we're not necessarily arguing which is the most um, the best financial move, so to speak, in terms of actual interest costs, like which is the best. Um, off the top of my head, I do believe that when we look at the borrowing costs on 3.5 on 57 plus 17, with all your income going in, expenses coming out, we can absolutely lower the, the borrowing cost. The 440 would work more effectively in here than out there. Does that make sense before I go any further? The 440 is stronger in the HELOC at 3.5 than it is at by itself at 19.24. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So like, so like I said, if you feel comfortable, you can absolutely say, okay, uh, 57,000 is what I currently owe plus the 17. So my balance goes up to 74. That is violating our leveraging rules, right? That's cutting it close in terms of utilization on the on the debt tool itself mm -hmm. if the market if the real estate market were to crash what we need to do before you say yes to doing that even though it makes financial sense we want to look at the uh the value of the property today do you have an idea of what the value of that home is today it's 449k okay that's a lot okay cool so um 222 Eight four three seven plus fifty seven, and then let me throw in that seventeen. So total amount of debt on the house, if I did this, would be two ninety six eight forty three fifty seven today. And then let's say tomorrow real estate crashes. So the value of the home goes from four forty nine. Let's say I lose twenty percent of its value. So that's eighty nine. Call it ninety k. So four forty nine. Minus ninety thousand. It's three fifty nine. So I, the value of my home would have to drop tremendously before I would have essentially where the the amount you owe is more than what the house is worth. So that would be like I think the term is underwater. House is underwater. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I feel comfortable. My house is appraised at this amount. I have plenty of equity in the property between what I owe and um, what it's worth. Uh, the downside is as soon as I got 74,000 total owed on the, the HELOC, there's not a whole lot of leftover space, okay? Mm -hmm. One way to solve for this, you may wanna consider is I can move this savings that's doing nothing, earning nothing. I could move the savings temporarily and put it in the HELOC and just hold it there. Mm -hmm. And and essentially the HELOC is now your emergency fund. It's your savings account, it's your checking account, and it's all in one location. So this is an option and this is an option, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go through it real quick. Option okay. one, I can just get a little read on velocity banking, get, get the inner workings going, making sure I got the bill pay set up and, you know, money going in, money coming out, and I get comfortable with that for the next few months. And I'm just doing velocity banking on the debt tool itself for the next six months at the very least, just to get a read on it. Um, okay. All income goes in, expenses come out, right? And instead mm -hmm. of saving, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop technically saving in a savings account, and I'm gonna start saving by keeping money in the HELOC. Mm -hmm. That would be, that's it for six months, just do that, right? Okay. And then we can, you know, converse and, and get together and have another session like this. Second option, which is a multitude of things, everything I just said, plus everything I just said, plus move 17 to 57, bringing the balance above the, the, the chunk amount. So let me get that number again. So it's 57,000 plus 17. So I would be at 74K by moving boom to boom. Then I would have 440 plus 694.02. And it's amazing how we go from zero net cash flow 
and within the very first month, we jump all the way to 1134.02 in cash flow, flowing and sitting in the line of credit itself. So cash flow can potentially jump to this 1134.02 number, and that was underestimating because I was using I was using this number 350. It could be more, right? It could be much more than that. Yeah. So. Uh, right, could be up to 500 or so. Now we're doing velocity banking. Okay, great. This is now gone. Great. These are gone. These are gone. Now it's just the main mortgage itself and the HELOC itself. All right, cool. In addition, move the 28, park it in the HELOC. So I go from 74,000 back down to 46. Okay, it's one option. Okay. Other thing you can do is say, all right, um, I don't necessarily feel comfortable yet moving all my savings out of this location, then I'd say, all right, well then maybe take a portion of it just to get back below the 66% range, right, of, of, of leverage. So we could say 74,000 minus, uh, or, or, you know, bring it back down to, well, let's just do that, 59,400. So you could move anywhere from as little as 14,600 to the whole amount into the HELOC to reduce that borrowing cost tremendously and have this 440 working 3.5% as opposed to 19.24. So that would be the advantage there. Follow me so far? Yes. So I'm either gonna be as low as a balance after literally the first month, I'm gonna be at a balance at 46 or I'm gonna be at a balance of 59,400. This is my cash flow moving forward on the conservative side could be upwards of like 14 maybe right mm -hmm. and um you're literally just doing velocity banking on the line of credit the whole thing's on automative right you automate this whole thing you don't got to think money goes in money comes out money goes in money comes out you're done right you don't got to worry about yeah. chunking you don't got to worry about you know what's the next debt to pay off you just operate in this for probably a good year year and a half until yeah. you get until you get the balance you know down to like maybe 10 15 20k and then you can consider as the balance drops you can consider a year year and a half out from now potentially depending on the interest rate environment you may and depending on what your goals are you may want to go from a second position heloc to a first lean heloc where you can access all that equity in the property and have a similar interest rate around this 4.625, somewhere around that similar, even if the rate is higher, say between five and 7%, because of velocity banking, I can manipulate that below 4.6. I can get it down in the neighborhood of like two to three in actual cost of, of borrowing. Because with the first lien HELOC, the your mortgage is the debt tool, right? So now your mortgage is the debt tool, is your savings account, is your emergency fund account, is your checking account, all in one location, working in your favor. And you've got all this equity where you're like, okay, for the next six to 12 months, I'm doing velocity banking. And if I come across a cash flow opportunity, I will just, I can invest in that because I have access to capital. And in this particular financial economy that we're in right now, access to cash flow and access to capital is probably one of the most important things that we all should be thinking of right now. Not net worth. Net worth is pointless if I can't access it. Yes. So if I can access cash flow, access capital, you have a house, you manage it, you take care of it, you steward your money right. This could be a very viable strategy. Um, with that being said, we'll close it out here. Any any questions or do you need me to recap on anything here? I think that's that's it. Thank you. Beautiful.